I do not like television. I do not like the conventions of TV production. I am allergic to canned content. So instead, I'm out here on an ancient barrier island in South Texas, not doing what a television host is supposed to do. Now, Joey's already out here botanizing. Look at the croton. Got a nice view of the carpels. It's a beautiful plant, even when it's not in flower. Thanks, Al, for taking one for the team and meeting with some wannabe lawn killers on your own. Meanwhile, I'm out here lurking around in the dunes, compiling a list of plant species to use in this yard once we've annihilated the lawn. Looks like some something out of a damn Godzilla movie. This is Joey, the host of a yard makeover show who hates yard makeover shows. How the f did I get sand? Man, it gets everywhere. These TV shows, they're like, we need big stuff happening. Tip through the tulips with me. We're driving into South Padre Island, Texas. The ecologically, pretty amazing place. That's basically a sandbar that popped up 100,000 years ago or so. So you have these varied ecosystems all within the mile wide island. You have these barren beaches, and then you have some four dunes with light vegetation, and then you have these heavily vegetated dunes behind them. Then it opens up into these vegetative salt flats on the bay side of the island, and that is just bird heaven and sea turtle heaven. South Padre Island is where Randy sea turtles go on spring break to meet other Randy sea turtles. We really want to raise awareness, and it's so cool that we have found some partners in that. John and Julie, they are taking their vacation home, and they are killing the lawn, and they're putting in a native plant garden, much like they've already done at their house in McAllen. Hi. Hey. I'm here. I'm John Kittleman. And I'm his wife, Julie Kittleman. Hi, Al. I'm John. John is the general manager of a local TV news station, and Julie is a judicial assistant. They lead busy lives in McAllen and like to unwind at the beach. This is our vacation home in South Padre Island. In the late 60s, there were only two beach houses on the whole island, and this was one of them. Had the opportunity to buy it, and so we did. At the time, John and Julie had not yet discovered their love for native plants. It all started with wanting to do something for John's mother, Grandma Jane. It's been a, a bit of a journey. It started, I'd say, about four years ago. My mom, she's 94 now, moved in with us, and she was very much a birder, outdoors person. She came to our house, and one of the things we thought we would do is a water feature. See, I think there's one over there. Uh, give her a new show every day, right, with the birds coming in and out. The kids gave me this for Mother's Day, and it has grown and certainly makes my life's a lot more pleasant. Plus, I think they've learned a little something. That's right. You've yeah. certainly taught me a lot. <laughs> and that really started this journey. So then we added some natives and some tropicals in the backyard. And so we've slowly converted our ornamental plants into natives. And we've learned about the negatives about having grass. And so we wanted to do it here. Yeah, of course. So we're kind of pioneers here. All of that, yes, exactly. And that's what we found a, a little bit in McAllen, but we're thinking here it's going to explode. Oh, yeah, it's going to blow people's minds. We're hoping. Yeah, because people come here from all over the world. That's and so right. they're going to come down this little street on the way to the beach and say, something's different What's with that going on there? Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's the goal, yeah. yes. Yeah. And that's such a huge important thing to do in this movement is let people know by kind of doing it yourselves and putting it out right, there. Right. That's right. I feel like I'm a a pretty good advocate for this because I was in a different place just six months ago. Well, let's, let's see what we're working with. Absolutely, this we're excited. This is awesome. Yeah. So I see a large swath right yes. here. We have a blank canvas here. Yeah, this is awesome. And I see a little bit of elevation right, right. there. Mm -hmm. Elevation gain is measured in inches on South Padre Island where the highest point is just over 50 feet along the dune ridges. From there, the dunescape descends to the sea transitioning through different native plant habitats. We're going to replicate some of them right here. 
really cool spot. There's not a lot of long-term family houses here, it seems like. A lot of condos, a lot of hotels, a lot of apartments and stuff. And this seems like one of those special spots where it's a sizable piece of land and they're gonna have full capacity to just annihilate this lawn and put in a beautiful native plant garden. No herbicides and limited hydrocarbons will be spewed into the sea breeze during this lawn killing because we've called in what you might call a uh, subject matter expert, the angel of death. Kill your lawn. You know, we got to come up with a gimmick every time we want to kill a lawn. You've seen us do all kinds of goofy stuff. And you know, we always got to tell a little story when we kill a lawn. So I figured who better to ring in the end of this lawn than death himself. Obviously, I'm very pro-death, so when I was asked to appear on Kill Your Lawn, no brainer. People don't know, actually, death takes a break now and then, and he comes to South Padres Island. I love the sea turtles. What can I say? I love the baby sea turtles. <laughs> Something really special about doing this project with Julie and John here is this is a place that's under botanized, and people don't think of it as a big point on the map of the native plant movement. I'm out here in the dunes where the turtles lay their eggs, trying to change that and I'm stoked to recreate some of these native plant constellations at Julian John's. <laughs> the South Padre Island dune ecosystem is a maze of fascinating plants that literally hold this island together. How you doing? What's up, how you doing? Well, I'm, I'm good. It's good to see you out here. I'm glad we get to finally meet up. I've been at the house. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so soothing. So calming. Basically, the house that we're going to be planting stuff at basically looked like this 100 years ago. We're going to come here to see what's growing, to get an idea of what would do well there. And so we see behind us, like, the sparsely vegetated four dunes, and then it opens up into this beautiful grassland that, to be honest, it makes me a little wistful for Chicagoland and Northwest Indiana's sand dune prairies. Yeah, Indiana dunes is similar thing, probably similar species. Yeah, they're creeping dune plants. Dune plants everywhere must adapt to constantly shifting sands. And they do this by sinking their roots deep and rapidly expanding above the sand. Let's go down here and check out some of the stuff. You can see like this, this is a species of croton. It's in the poinsettia family, Euphorbiaceae. Look at the net, the net-like uh, patchwork of roots that holds oh, this right here. together. So these plants stabilize the dunes, and they're also adapted to growing in what's a really <laughs> harsh environment, just to grow in sand, especially when it's hot as hell here. This would be a beautiful landscape plant in front of a house, man. Look at this three-carpeled ovary. Look at that. Tell you me like about the carpal. A carpal is a female unit of plant reproduction. Proton is a large genus with a lot of species in it, and a lot of diversity in Texas especially. It has three carpels, a trait that indicates it's in the family Euphorbiaceae. So an ovary can have many carpels. Now, we're out here in late January, which isn't exactly the height of flowering season in most of the United States. Let's go look at this, because this is the only thing blooming down here. But this is South Texas where even in winter, something's flowering. Wow. Oh, my god. So this was going off here. This is a species of Gayardia. It's got some really corny, honky name for it. It's called, like, Indian blanket or something that's stupid and mildly offensive, doesn't make any sense. This is actually a compound flower, about 100 tiny flowers in there. And there's one of them. What we're doing is we're looking at typical sunflower family morphology for any faces in the audience who uh, don't think it's important. We'll tell you why this is important. Pretty wonderful thing that's going on here with the sunflower family is they evolved what looks like a single flower, like a sunflower, is actually composed of, in the case of this Gayardia, there's about probably, I don't know, 80 separate individual flowers. We call them florets. So that's a single 
flower right there. That's a single floret. The benefit of this is that when an insect comes by to pollinate, it ends up pollinating 80 flowers at one time instead of just one. So anyway, that's gay already, but it's a really common native, oh, native roadside so nice. weed. We're really excited to work with people that know about natives and really give them the green light. You know, hey, here's your template. You know, if you're a painter, paint. Or in this case, if you're a planter, plant. That's why Julie and John brought in the guy who first introduced them to native plant landscaping at their home in nearby McAllen, Texas. My name is Zachary Johnson. I am originally from New York City, the borough of Staten Island. So during the week, I am a biologist for the Texas Department of Transportation, but on my free time, I do native landscaping, just small scale by myself, no crew. You remember these red salvias? I mean, they were five inches tall when we planted yeah, them last yeah, year. And they're getting on four feet and they're mm -hmm. covered in seeds. So he walked into our house and he was wearing a shirt, kill your lawn. And of course, we never heard we of didn't it. understand. We hadn't even realized that. And once we saw that, it opened up our eyes. And he mentioned Joey and, and his project. And Zach's almost like a sorcerer in a sense of <laughs> everything that he told us came true. Julie and John trust Zach to conjure the same botanical magic at their vacation home. I thought it was a really special opportunity to be able to plant these plants here. A lot of people want that instant yard. They want to buy too many plants, plant them too close together so they have the instant gratification, but now my yard is done. That's not how Zach operates. He takes the long view, realizing it will take time for John and Julie's yard to mature into a true native dunescape. And it all starts with adding elevation. We want to take some piles of soil and put them around. So we mimic a dune. You have like higher sand and soil and it goes down. When you plant the little seedling here, it'll spread out over maybe three months. You want to have it take over the area. The new soil will rise into three mounds where Zach will plant native yucca and cacti. Racing through it all will be native vines and other dune species known for their rapid reproduction. Like horny sea turtles, native plants arrive on South Padre in a hurry to reproduce and grow fast. A lot of the plants that live on the dunes, they want to colonize it right away. So a lot of the plants that we want to plant are going to grow fast. So we are going to plant smaller ones so that when they do grow, they fill it in relatively quickly. But when we do plant them, they're going to be a little bit sparser. Zach usually works alone, but for this job, with TV producers breathing down his neck about deadlines, he's brought in extra support. So it sounds like we got a good mix in there. Um, Meet Joe Kitterman. While Zach offers a light touch with his plant expertise, Joe runs a wrecking crew. You got kind of like a collaboration going on here. Julie and John have worked with Zach on their house in McAllen, right? And Absolutely. They loved it, so you guys are kind of teaming up on this one. Yeah, I'm uh, more of an X's and O's landscaping guy. Zach's a local native plant expert, mm -hmm. so he's picked all the plants here. There's a lot of native stuff in his design. There's some stuff that we've never even used before, and I'm really excited to see it coming together. Joe's crew scrapes the turf away and sledgehammers a wall to make room for some stylish planters. Yeah, this feels already so much more open. Yeah, and I think with some pottery going in here and mm -hmm. some trailing plants down the top, some natives, I think it's going to look real nice. Bring nature to the vacation home. We're excited. We're in that process of seeing it all unfold. This is a big moment on South Padre. It's possibly the first time a lawn on the island has been fully redoomed. We're actually reshaping part of the yard over there. We got compost here with a special soil blend. And what they do is they actually get waste from the shrimp processing factory, and they make organic compost out of it. Then they blend it back with native topsoil. So when it gets here, it's really good, very nutritious for the plants. Shrimp-based compost is rich in calcium, which is perfect for promoting fast root growth. And by blending shrimp compost and native soils with what's already in John and Julie's yard, Joe hopes to strike a fertile balance. Not too shrimpy, not too salty. The solidity level, the salt level, mm -hmm. gets built up in these yards, and we blend it with the soil so as the roots grow out, they get used to the soil that's here mm -hmm. without having to be just drowned in salt right away. Right. So we're trying to get the, what we call happy roots. Happy roots. We were talking about some yuccas that are that are native to the island here. Joey's got some good ideas for a kind of a special plant that we're going to go look for. And there's some mist flowers and just all this beautiful stuff that grows on this really special habitat. 
The newly created dune habitat isn't the end of it. Zach is bringing native plants right up to the house so Grandma Jane can look out the window and watch birds and butterflies up close. The plan is for wispy flowering plants in the new pots and spiky coastal desert species on the new dunes. Joey is still MIA from John and Julie's house. Oh, there's some nice stuff out here. Choosing instead to hide out at Laguna Atascosa National Wildlife Refuge. I don't know what we're looking for, but Joey gave me a pin to come meet him. Came out on this drizzly day to uh, see what uh, the coastal scrub of South Texas looks like and uh, get some ideas in terms of species composition and a plant list for what could go in a, a front yard. Open the door of your mind and take a walk outside yourself here in nature. Do you want the parasol, Al? There you go. Tiptoe through the tulips with me. But it's not tulips, it's more like spiky brambles. Yeah, my kind of plants, man, a little mean. A little mean. They're mean but beautiful. Look, it's a baby yucca. That's what you're looking at right there. Man, it's so fucking cool. I know. And they're, of course, pollinated by a specialist species of moth that the female moth actually, you know, takes the pollen grains from one flower, stuffs it into the, the stigma of another flower, and then lays an egg in there. And a yucca, as payment for her pollinating its flowers, the yucca lets her larva, you know, eat some of the seeds. So then when they're all blooming, it's like these big white porches of flowers. Whoa. Just covering the landscape. Of uh, the things we're putting in the yard, for sure, I know the yuccas, for sure. Right, the yuccas especially, which are kind of the anchors of uh, this ecosystem. Do you want me to carry the parasol, Al? No, I'm going to go down. I'm saying right now I kind of feel like a dainty Victorian maiden, as if I've been brought into the countryside to be courted. And you know, honestly, I like that feeling, you know? Trepidatiously. Trapsing. All right, yeah, let's go to this last spot that's just a little ways down the road. Landscaper Joe hooked us up with access to a private ranch near South Padre where we can dig up native cacti for transplanting at John and Julie's. But there's a catch. This ranch, like many down here, is infested with wild javelinas. Cute little blind smelly bastards. Oh, here's a bunch of them. We're gonna get some of this acantho cereus, this really cool night blooming cactus, big white flowers. Mm. It's not gonna hurt the population because this is all one clonal population. So that you can see they send up shoots. We'll take some, they'll regrow them in, you know, six months. These cactus are retiring to South Padre Island, basically. Yeah. Yeah, cacti are just like little batteries. Yeah, they got carbohydrates and water stored in there. Tissue. Oh, that's beautiful. So we'll stick that in the sand at the house. Whoa. Six months. By summer, this thing will be fully established. And then when they bloom, they get a big six inch white flower. What we could do now is we could find a nice little patch of uh, the native prickly pear, Opuntia. It's a real mean f Mean enough, in fact, to stand its ground when attacked by ravenous javelinas. Can have a lean to eat that probably just took a giant chunk out of it. So you're telling me they don't give a damn. They don't care at all, man. This would be a nice one to throw on the mound. We could throw that on the mound on South Patris Island. Undulating dunes. All these plants, they're specifically adapted to thrive here. Me, on the other hand, I am not adapted to thrive in a yard makeover show, so I plot an escape. Let's go steal a golf cart. You want to do that? Let's do it, I yeah. did that once. It actually was pretty fun. We got away with it. <laughs> While Zach and Joe put the finishing touches on a South Padre Island yard, you want just one, and it'll be plenty for the whole entire pot. Al and I borrow a golf cart parked outside an all-you-can-eat seafood joint. Two men abscond with a golf cart. It don't have a gas pedal. It has a go pedal. We just seen this abandoned with the keys in it. It's not theft. We're just borrowing, and we're going to bring it back. I call it more of a benevolent absconding. <laughs> $500 fine. That was a non-emergency honk. No That's honking on the no golf cart. <laughs> Should be coastal dunes scrub. Dunes. 
A cool combination of plants native to the southern tip of Texas is what we're excited to see at John and Julie's. That is a trailing blue sage. Is this native to the island? Not native to the island, but native to Cameron County. Okay. And it's the only county in the whole United States that's native too. As those nice little delicate blue flowers, and from the windows you'll be able to see butterflies coming to it. Good thing about this here is the genotype of the plants that we use is the genotype of the Rio Grande Valley. So some of these species are found in other areas of Texas or other areas of Mexico. And the seed source of the plants in this yard were all collected from the Rio Grande Valley. So no matter if it's full sun, baking heat in the middle of summer, or a monsoon hurricane, the evolutionary history of the individual genetic line of these plants has endured that already. Where there once was a lawn, there's now a new patch of dune habitat realistic enough to impress Grandma Jane. You like it, Grandma? I do like it. We had to arrive in true island style I in like our golf your, cart. I like your wheels. Yeah. <laughs> we are so happy with this. No one else has done this here, so hopefully you guys will yeah. be a, a model for others You're to follow exactly right. and emulate. You got the right idea. And if See any that? place it needs, this is it. Right. It's so cool how Jane was like the driving force behind planting all the native plants. Grandma loves it. She knows she was right, so that makes her happy. You had to have seen it before. And when you see it now, I knew it was going to be good, but I didn't know it was going to be this outstanding. <laughs> I can't wait to have people over, and I can't wait to have the birds and the butterflies over. And we're very happy with the Look, combination. There's already a butterfly. There's a butterfly Sorry. coming through. <laughs> it's a checkered white butterfly, and it's headed for the Sephora tomentosa, AKA yellow Sephora. Tomentosa, or tomentos, is Latin for covered in hairs, which protect the leaves from the brutal sun Yellow Sephora, which is one of the highlights of this yard, because we have probably about 30 of them planted there. They'll get about four feet tall. Then we have Ipomia Pest Capre. That one will grow about two or three feet per day in the middle of summer. We have the Woolly Stemodia. We have the Sea Purslanes, which in nature, they will stabilize dunes. Then we have the Ipomia, which is one of the first plants to enter dune ecosystem after a disturbance, like such as a hurricane. Six months from now, this yard will be grown in and thriving. Then, year by year, native gardens just keep getting better. Not a lot of people in South Texas would be willing to do something like this, because the dunes are shifting. Like my uh, somewhat bipolar emotional uh, standing at any point of the day. Okay. You know, one minute I'm breaking into a rage for <sighs> to stab somebody, another one I want, I want to hug everybody like they're my best friend. I think I'm unhinged, but I'm not. I'm just like the shifting dune sands. You are. Here we go. Another lawn down in South Padre Island. Everyone drives a golf cart to get around. And now I'm gonna be taking it to Fat Benny's Shrimp Shack. They have a family belly buster deal that's nine pounds Ooh. of seafood for $50. <laughs> 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 